All right, guys. I know y'all been waiting on this one. Uh, excuse me if I sound a little weird. I am fighting a heck of a cold right now, so uh, I am a little under the weather, and my voice is way off right now. But I won't hold y'all. This is uh, I've had a lot of positive feedback. Uh, his episode part one has climbed the rankings, and uh, I've got a lot of positive feedback from it. Uh, and uh, the the every, man, I just I can't thank y'all enough for for listening. But uh, part two. J-Mo, John Molder, coming to you right now. We carry the topic on. Here we go, guys. Welcome, everybody, to the Hound's Tales podcast. This is your home for field trialing and deer dog hunting. It'll be stories and discussions on the world of dog hunting. So let's drop the gate, cast your hounds, and get ready for another episode of the Hound's Tales podcast. And, that, and that's kind of, you know, that's a, that's a very good, it's a good roll into what I was getting get ready to ask you actually is, you know, some people, like you said it earlier, it's a very thoughtless job, but I don't think people see the perks of hunting. I mean, of, of judging, excuse me. I said hunting, I meant judging. Um, oh yeah. And I mean, it, well, just like I said earlier, I mean, I, there's no doubt in my mind. I, all this is opinionated, and I don't know. I still learn every day in this sport, and I am nowhere near where I want to be in this sport. But I'm better, and I'm further along in this sport because of the time I've spent judging. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. Like, like I, I, I've learned, like we were talking about earlier, man, you, you remember that dog 641. Like, damn, I like that dog. Yep. I've seen that dog three times today. That dog looks good. He carries himself well. He does this whatever he might do to yours. Well, then at the end of the day, look at where he is in those results. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Well, if he, if that's obviously that's working, that's what you need to strive for. And, and if you look my brown jaw dog, I mean, she's goes back. Uh, we just bred her. It was a honor of mine. Mr. Cody Hawkins, one of the talking about judges, some of the greatest judges I've ever judged with Cody Hawkins, probably one of the greatest houndsmen I've ever been around. I mean, he's been there, he's done it. He's seen it. And when he wanted to take her and breed her, of course she was my dog and she goes back five generations my stock i wanted to breed her to one of my dogs i wanted to keep it my stock top and bottom you know right right. which right. she wasn't my stock top and bottom but i wanted to start breeding the top you know yeah yeah yeah. but then i got to think about it i said well damn it, it, it cody done been in the picture with more champion three day and been around and mm -hmm. he done i mean damn he back when he was with east coast kennel you know i mean hell he used to put a collar on east coast hollywood you know like the uh, you if know, he wants to breed to one of my dogs, I'd be dumb not to send it to him, you know? <laughs> right, right. Like, well, oh, sorry, Mr. Cody. No, I think I'm going to breed this dog myself. What am I, an idiot? Like, right. no, here, please take the dog. <laughs> you and, know, and, and, uh, not to interrupt you, uh, 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 why, it just at this this point, this this somebody had told me one time, and it goes just along with what you're saying. Somebody had told me at one point, if you want to find the best, how do they say it? If you want to find the best houndsman, find the best judges oh yeah and i mean there's always that talk and that was one thing i was always scared to death of because you've always you've got some people that you see judge these hunts and you've never really seen them in the results you know what i'm saying right. i didn't never want that but i i yeah, you're exactly right some of the greatest judges i've ever judged with are very 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 good houndsmen and when they showed up to a hunt with dogs you better be ready yeah and uh the uh like, I don't know. This year, I got fortunate. Not, I wanted to – beginning of the year, I said, I'm a, I said, I, 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 said, I want to judge a bunch this year. And I said, I'm going to – well, then I started keeping track of it. I kept track of every hour I judged. I kept track of every crossing I got. <coughs> I kept track of where I judged this hunt at on this day and all this dumb stuff. And people that know me know I always keep notes. I keep all kinds of notes over dumb stuff. Well, then it kind of became a personal competition. We're like, damn. I've judged 40 hours this year. Let's see if I can get 80. Right. Well, then I got 80. I was like, let's see if I can get 100. Yep. Well, then I got 125. I was like, let's see if I can get 150. And I ended up, I think it was 172 hours this year. And I think it was 37 or 38 days that I judged, you know. And, and every time 
it was different and it was cool like you know we're judging those puppy hunts around buckingham well me nor none of my kennel partners had any puppies that age this year so i kind of got with each one of those hunt clubs and they were like yes of course we'll take you please come judge right right and uh and it was kind of cool like watching herman this year with those sergeants you know yep. they were real fun yep and 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 you know you watch that and then it transferred and then i go to a three-day and watch you know i watched quite a few champions be made this year and not not a single champion whether it be on the outside creed more or at billy pools not a single champion was made this year at a hunt i was at that i didn't score you right. know what i'm saying like like it feels good to me to know that i'm helping you know yep. like not i'm not just a number i'm not just oh judge 14 you know like i helped decide right. i helped put it out and it goes back to like i was talking about brown jaw she goes back to those same dogs that 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 weren't placing in the fox pen you know what i'm saying and and what has changed the bloodline hasn't changed and i'm not saying they're winners and the, but they've placed they've placed a whole lot more than those other dogs did and i i like to think the reason is because i've changed a little bit you know the bloodline is still the same but i've changed and i think i've changed for the better for the dogs but i just like I like those old bloodlines, and I would love to one day be able to have a gold seal with just about every dog on it's got my name on it. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, that's my goal. I've always, when I really, really got to hitting in the Foxman, and she raised my eyebrow, I bought Colby Taylor and Hunter Shoemaker. They had a dog, and I fell in love with her. She was one of the last crosses ever off Tease Blackie, and I fell in love with her. Right. And uh, they ended up getting rid of the dog to – Adam Bailey, a good buddy of ours. He was running Polecat Fox Reserve at that time down there in North Carolina. Yep. And uh, and uh, I loved her, but he ended up getting the dog. Well, I ended up buying the dog from him, getting her later. And and this dog, she changed my whole aspect on what it really took for, like, she was a one-day dog. She was a 100% one-day dog. But she changed what I wanted and what I needed for a one-day dog. Right. And... And, you know, I would get home a lot of times. We'd get home from one, and a lot of my dogs, they'd still be ready to go again. She'd be done to the world. But she had laid it all out. That was it. Right. She was, she, she was done for five or six days. Well, she started doing really well for me. I won my first pen hunt. You know, I was placing her everywhere. I was placing her everywhere. It was cool. Like, finally, you know, I got it. I'm, I'm going, you know, I'm placing. yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I show up and people aren't necessarily looking at me like, ha look, there's John. They were like, oh, shit, there's John. Right, you know, right, wonder right. If he brought, I wonder if he brought that bobtail bitch. Yeah. And, uh, and, and it felt cool. Well, well, then I started placing with those Ironman dogs a little bit. And I, I, I remember one time I placed, I think Fancy was third at Tower Hill, and I placed Boss Man, actually. Boss Man. Right. The dog I made champion. Yeah. Placed him like 14th or something. Right. I was more happy to place a dog off my own stock 14th than I was to be second with the dog I went out and bought. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And that's when I really decided that I knew what it took, but I was done. I was done. I wanted I wanted to hear my breed now. I right. didn't want to hear yours. No offense to you. Yeah, no yeah, offense yeah. to anybody. I wanted to hear my breed. Right. I wanted to hear that. And I feel like that and should be anybody's I'm... goal that's in this and doing this for the long run. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, and I feel like judging really helped me because I saw, you know, this type of dog does this, this dog does that. Well, these dogs all go back to this dog. Well, this dog all goes back to that. Yep. I see. I remember, and, you know, t you know, on that note, it's like I remember when I first started judging. You know, I, like you said, most of us are like this. Most of us that are in the sport are like this. They grew up deer dog hunting, you know, or deer yeah, dog oh. hunting before they got into it. So it takes exactly a different right. dog out there oh, in the yeah. deer woods so i i and knew what i, I wanted it really say it. go ahead i'm sorry beach billy said it the other day in his podcast he's the first time he ever won he said the whole reason he won was because they told him he couldn't win with a deer dog and you can't right. you can compete you can take i mean hey, but it's all a different hey, it's all a, that's a whole different we could have a podcast on that right it's right also right. what you consider a deer dog and what i consider a deer dog and what your neighbor considers a deer dog and what my neighbor considers a deer dog is probably four different things yeah yeah but the biggest thing you know that i saying? learned was like 
you know, looking at them, it, I thought I knew what I wanted in a dog when I started field trialing. I was like, okay, well, I know I need a dog that keeps his nose in the ground, that hunts his ass off, and knows how to lock a track. You know, I, I knew that. And that, that still holds true, but there's a different way about doing it. And that's what I learned in judging, is I got to watch what these dogs, like you said, and it is, like I said, it's on your note. But I, through the years of judging now, I've learned and twisted my, my thought process of what I want a, a good field trial dog to be. And that's, it goes back that's to, your benefit of judging. And, like, I mean, I'll get on somebody's ass tomorrow probably. Well, I can't tomorrow. I'm, y'all know where I stay. I'm <laughs> doing time right now in good old Facebook jail. But, you know, I get, on people, I get on people all the time on Facebook. They talk about, like, say, say for instance, we were talking about Billy Pools. People talk about old school kennels all the time. Yep. Oh, imagine that. Another old school show, blah, blah, blah. Well, why don't y'all come with me next weekend and get your recorder and your pen and let's go look at the damn dogs and see why old school's putting on a show. Yep. And then when you leave, I promise you, you're going to be like, well, okay, I see now. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, 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 and that is what. A lot of those people you see complaining, doing stuff like that, you never see them in those judges. That's room. right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. That's right. And, and, and I don't know, man. So it gives you a different aspect for it. And quite frankly, I enjoy fox hunting. I enjoy it. This this is a very expensive sport. It is. This is not this is not a cheap hobby. No. And I mean, you might as well own a speedboat, I feel like. And, <laughs> Probably and be cheaper. Quite frankly, if I want to go fox hunting every weekend, I can't afford to enter a hunt every weekend, but I can afford to go judge every that's weekend. It. You know what I'm saying? That's it. So that's I a can good, afford to go judge. That, that's a good roll into the next uh, you know, question I was going to ask you is, why, in your opinion, is judging so important? And I know that's a loaded question, but yeah, it is, uh, it's very loaded because, I mean, like you said, we could probably do a whole other hour just on that question alone. But in your opinion, well, just like- kind of summarize, what's what's so? why is it so important to go judge? I feel like it's real big for people your age and my age today to get into it because we, we've been talking, hell, we just wasted an hour talking about the Southern Classic three day. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Any of those three days I go and judge, it's nine times out of ten, I'm the youngest judge in there by a yep. long shot. Yep. And if, if we're all talking about, oh, we hope fox hunting's around for 50 more years and we hope it's there, well, if there's no judges, what good's it going to be in five years? Yep. You know what I'm saying? If, if there's nobody to judge these hunts, what, are we going to have a buddy hunt for a three-day? No, sir. No. <laughs> right. No. no I mean, and it's just, it's, uh, you get one of those things where, you know, like you, a lot of people always say, should it be mandatory? Should it be this? Should it be that? Uh, well, yeah. Then you have people saying, you have people saying, well, maybe I don't want that guy looking at my dog. Maybe that guy ought to not be judging dogs. Maybe he don't know enough about it. Well, 10, 12 years ago when Mr. Mike Hearns took me to that first three-day, I guarantee it was somebody that looked at me and said the same thing. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. But I learned, and now when I show up to a three-day, I feel like majority of the people are like, hey, they got John judging, you know? Yep. Like, that's good. Yep. And I like that. Yep. That goes into something I wanted to talk about, just being an honor and judging. I This year I got I, – I was able to master that hunt, but more than that, I did a little math earlier. I think it was six or seven, maybe eight hunts that I was asked this year to judge home plate. Yeah. And, you know, like, like that just meant a lot to me that these people like Chris Ross having the truck hunt. I mean, it's the 2023 Toyota Tacoma truck hunt. And at Foxdale, he's got three or four spots that people can see. You're you're considered a home plate judge. He asked me to be one of them. Right. Hell yeah. Absolutely. A lot of people don't like it. I kind of do. I Hollywood love it. always. I love it. Watch me. Watch yep. me. We'll see what I'm doing. Yep. And you'll mess up some, and it feels like the end of the world, but it's no big deal. Like, they know you're working for it. And it gets people to, you know, yep. I was home plate judge for the, uh, I was one of the home plate judges for the buggy hunt at Double C. I was, uh, Earl Taylor asked me to master, and I was home plate for the two day beagle hunt at Turpin's Creek. I, uh, I helped Colby Taylor. Of course, Colby Taylor was the master of hounds for one of the two day derbies at, uh, at um hollywood, hollywood this year yep. mm-hmm. and they asked me to judge home plate you want to talk about a fun place to judge home plate man <laughs> yes sir <laughs> but the, more I get, the bigger i get man that place is rough you want to talk man yeah you can put some miles on some feet in there yes you can 
Yes, you can. But, I mean, I just love it. I mean, people think I'm joking, but, like, I don't know if it's worth bragging about or not, but, I mean. Man, it's. I like, bought far enough after, but last year when I was at the East Coast Masters, I literally tore my meniscus <laughs> trying to get crossing right. for somebody else's dog. Like, right. like, like, I don't know. I really try for it. I really yep. honestly, I try, you know, yep. like. And then I think about it, and I it was somebody else do that for your dog. Well, maybe not, but I can't help that, so right. I'm going to do it for them. Right, you know and that's, and that, like, oh, God, I hate, I hate that process of thinking that that. Exactly. Yeah, oh I agree one hundred percent. Would they would they do it for you? Uh, no, well, but that's not the point. That, well, well uh, nine times out of ten, whoever whoever asks you that question, that means they wouldn't do it. For right, you. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? And that's all that means. You know, you're talking about the home plate judge, and, and people don't like being watched. And that's fine. You know, that's not for everybody. But one of the my fondest memories of this year, and of my judging, like you said, you know, and I got to master um, this uh, the southeastern. At the beginning oh, yeah. of this I year, there. And yep, I was there. You did a good job too, and you had not an easy hunt to master. I appreciate nothing that. really. It, 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 that was with the hunt I mastered down there. Everything just laid down perfect. It was just boom, 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 boom. Yours was far from that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there was definitely some curveballs in it, but yeah. the, the biggest takeaway for me was you know I, I i you know everybody knows how pool if you've been to pools you know end of the day end of the uh, end of the five hours you know there's dogs going to be coming to the gate and i'm a firm believer and it's in the rule book you're supposed to recast these hounds in the southeastern exactly. is early in the season sometimes there's not a lot of running we had harsh conditions for that hunt and they're, you know they were they were starting to quit and i made sure that I told myself as it was winding down, I said, I'm going to give these dogs every chance that I can give. And uh -huh. I made sure I walked every dog that come up to that gate back in. And the yep. guys from old school kennel after the hunt was over, come up and shook my hand. They said, you have been a pleasure to watch at the home plate. You have done everything that we could ever ask for as hunters. And you've given them dogs so many chances. Oh, yeah. And, and that, that right there stuck with me so hard, and it made the entire weekend worth it. Oh yeah, and it's crazy. Like we're talking about the difference in uh, in in what how different pools can be, and right. you judge that. When was that? That would have been in what March? March yeah. yeah, that's gonna be March seventh, eighth, ninth, something like something that. Like that, yeah, first second weekend. And. And then I judge when I master home plate at pools, it was the first weekend in September. So that's six months later. Right. And I think I got, uh, almost 60 crossings between three days wow. right there at the gate. You know wow. what I'm saying? I got I, five. I, I, all I've three got days. it right here somewhere. Yeah. I got it right here. The first day I got 15 crossings. The second day I got 18 crossings. The third day I got 19 crossings. I and think, I only scratched. I only had to scratch one dog at the gate all three days. The third day, with about thirty minutes left, a, a dog walked up and he just gave out. That's crazy. And I went up there and tried to recast him, and he wasn't going nowhere. It was yeah. kind of, his owner was standing there. He saw it. He he was scared to death it was going to happen. It was all good, but I was scared <laughs> to death I was going to have to scratch seventy five <laughs> dogs up there. Yep. I've seen it happen before. Yeah. But the pin jammed. It screamed. It was good weather. Right. It was perfect weather to run a red fox. Yep. And we all know, too, something that helps down there is casting a little bit in the daylight. And that was one thing we didn't, I mean, a little bit in the dark. In and the we dark. didn't have that Southern Classic. We right. didn't have that. Yep. Yep. I I urge every hunt, that especially that's running red, you know, foxes, you know. I know judges Well, if you in, get in, in the there dark. and you judge it, you see what it does. It gets them going and it gets, what it does is that first hour, the first day is what matters the most at those three days. It's got to be some running and it needs to break those dogs down. Right. And get them to where, and then the rest of the weekend you're good. Yep. The southeastern, I judge it every year. I think this year we're actually going to plan on running in it, but we're, we've I've always judged it. And you can the first hour you can tell oh 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 it it, it you know it, right. it's either going to go real good or it ain't. Yep, yep, yep. I 100 percent agree with you. So, <clears throat> you know, I obviously we talked kind of you know kind of really briefly touched on it i'm going to add to it just just to put my two cents in you know with this and you can you can talk you know go follow along with it if you want my my opinion on and, and you touched on it a little bit and 
you go to these judges' room at some of these hunts, and like you said, I go to a lot of these hunts, and I'm judging, especially the multi-day hunts, and I'm one of the youngest ones there. Yep. Even some of the one days, Mike, we're one of the youngest guys there. And I had this conversation uh, the other day and with a, with a guy, and I was talking about how I want to be more involved in the in the political side of all this stuff. Like I really want to get involved with going to Richmond and, and helping fight and, and and following in these footsteps of some of these guys. And he's like, if we don't get more people our age to be doing that, it, oh. it's going to die. It's going exactly. to die. And that's that's why, in my opinion, it's so important to get in there and start judging. Is oh, that yeah. reason right there? If we're not going to lose this sport, I mean, we may. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm talking kind of out of my ass here, but in my opinion, right now, the way I see things going, we're not going to lose this sport because of the government. We're going to lose it because people are too lazy to get off their butts and go help another hunt out. Oh yeah, and well, that goes back to what Beach Billy was talking about about however many. <laughs> hundred thousand people in the state of virginia hunt with a dog right and then say a meeting comes up in richmond and it's 75 people there yep yep you know and and he said it and he said it and he said it very well uh he's a business owner he's a very well-spoken man he said it well everything he said was well but like he said numbers speak power in this in this I don't want to call it a game we're playing, but it's almost like a cat and mouse game. I mean, yeah, it's better to be, it's better to have the numbers in this situation. And everybody, it's so many people in this sport that are just in it for a trophy, and yep. that's sad. Yep. And 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 it's 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 the truth, though. I mean, it's so many people that are in this sport just for a trophy. Right. And 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 I don't know. It's. We have the numbers, like he said. We have the numbers. We have so many numbers. And anybody, when you said you wanted to get in the political side of it, I was kind of like, ah, I just don't want to be in it. But then again, I need to be there. You know, like yeah. like uh, Kirby Birch and even Todd Miller, they've gotten on me about there's not a uh, there's not a uh, there's not a Virginia Hunting Dog Alliance chapter in the county of Fluvanna. The county I live in. Yep, that's why and I'm working on start one at Maddox to too. Together, but it's so much to get. It's so much to get together, and 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 I don't. It takes help, and yeah. I, I don't. I, I'm sure there's some people out here. Maybe somebody will hear me on this podcast, and they'll get with me, and we could get one going because it takes some work. Yep. But we all need to be better about it too. Like two or three years ago, I was going to those meetings. This last year, I didn't get to make it, but I should be down there. I mean. Everybody should. We all need to get better about it. And listening to this podcast, it's made me realize that. I mean, I I try to do the emails and I call and I do that, but that that the voice is heard, but you a face is even better. Yep. Yep. It really I went is. down there a couple of years ago. The first time I ever met Beach Billy was in was in Richmond. It wasn't a good circumstance to be meeting, but we met, you know. And, <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and we were walking around and we were talking to these people and we were showing them this and they were showing us that and it was a low number of people really that day, but they always do it. You know, we got back to the, no, there are no, this sport is a very expensive sport. And therefore in order to do it, you have to be, you have to have a job. Right. Well, these meetings are at like 10 o'clock on a Tuesday. You know I mean? They're never, they're never, never in the, in the, for the working man. And of course the politicians and half of them were fighting for fighting against, right. Uh, that's their job. They're going to be there. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. And I like, I don't know. I agree with you though. I think, and, you I know, think I, the I, judging I, aspect of it, I think it should almost, I, 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 I wouldn't be against saying, you know, if, 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 if hell this year, I think I judged, I don't know. I judged, five or six, three days at Billy Pools, right. and I ran two. I ran two. Yeah. Well, why couldn't everybody else do that? I mean, yeah, I'm not saying you have to judge five and only run two, but if you want to judge three, you ought to judge. If you want to run three, you ought to judge three. I mean, it's it, it's going to make everybody better, and I and I know there's plenty of the older guys that, that 
there's some of the older guys that they did their time judging and they don't want to, but these younger guys, there's no reason they can't be in there. Right. And quite frankly, they got to it. I, I, I don't know how many people called me after the three day when I won and they were like, man, that old dog still got it. Doesn't he? Well, yeah, but that old dog doesn't have the miles y'all's dogs do right. because this is only his second three day this right. year. This is y'all's right. dog's sixth three day this year. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and it adds up. Go ahead. Sorry. I mean, it adds up. No, go yeah. ahead. What you're saying? Well, I was going to add to, you know, what you were talking about with the judging thing. And, and I understand, it, and you understand it too, and I know you do. It, it's it's not always as easy for ju- people to judge, you know, multiple, oh. multiple hunts. Oh, and, and see, that's another thing, dude. That's, um, that was one of my biggest things with the uh, – it's a lot of – I get that side of it. Like, if I'm going to take vacation day, I want to run in the hunt. I, well, right. I get that. But yep. I, I'm fortunate. I have – I'm fortunate with my job. I'm I'm very fortunate. And 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 I have plenty of vacation, and I take it. And I'm not going to say I might not be able to slide away on a Friday without, you know. But I, I, I – it that is a big part of it. And when I go, you know, like we said earlier – you said in the introduction, as far as anybody that still has a job, I mean, yeah, that's a big thing about it. I like, mean, one of my biggest, one of my biggest admirers in the judging room that I ever judge with, Mr. Mike Smith. He's big home plate judge at all these three days. I mean, he was the home plate judge at the United States Open. Right. This man knows what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. they don't just ask anybody to be the home plate judge right. at the United States right. Open. Right. And he was, the, he was the one that told me that. He said, he said, Johnny said. He said, he said, who's going to take their vacation to come judge a fox hunt? Yep. And, I, and I agree with you because it's a very, very thankless job. But people say it's a thankless job, but then again, it's not. It like People yeah. thank me all the time for judging. But then those same people that thank me for judging, I'm like, all right, well, why don't you come judge with me next weekend? You know what I'm saying? Like, right. Quit thanking me every weekend. Why don't Why don't you come with me? One yeah, week? yeah. And, I, and if you – people listening, you know, and don't – it it like you like you're talking about. It's not we're, nobody's asking everybody to judge five three days in a year. That's oh no, and, and that's my own. I, I hate to cuss, keep cussing, but that's my own dumbass fault. Like if I want to <laughs> judge five, if I want to judge eight of them, that's cool. Right. I'm not saying anybody should have to judge five or eight of them. Yeah, but if you want to, you can. Yes, but if you, but I think you. There's plenty of people that, uh. They they should judge more. I think yeah. I think there's plenty of people that should judge. Going back to uh, old school kennels, going back to old school kennels. Right. Those guys right there judged both the two day derby and the dismal swamp this year. Right. That's right. more than half those people judge down there. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like exactly. Like those guys put in their time on both sides of the fence. That's and, that's uh, that's my what I tell people. That's that's my thing. Is what I tell people. I said if you can go out there and judge one three day and two one days a year, that's doing your part. Oh yeah. That's doing your oh, part yeah. to do this. If everybody oh, yeah. listening, and I know to this some boys up here. They've that. all gotten better. They've all gotten better about. <laughs> I like to think maybe me pressurize them a little bit more, you know, but they all judge a three day now, you know, everybody's right. getting to where they start to judge a little bit more. And I think I, I enjoy it. I thoroughly I enjoy it. Like, it. I don't know. I love it, it's it. fun. It's fun. I, hell, uh, uh, running in a hunt, uh, during the hunt is the boring part. Like, Oh God, <laughs> I wish I was in there. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. Uh, I don't know what to do with myself. It, but it's, it's so funny. Are, like it's, the, it's the opposite for both situations. Cause like when you're, when you're in, when you're running the hunt, you want to be in there judging. Then oh, after yeah. the hunt, you're like, man, those guys get to go back to the hotel and relax the rest oh, of the evening. Yes. And now our work starts. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, that's another. That back to what I was talking about. About it's cheaper. It's it's way oh, easier God, to yeah. do it. Yeah. Like like every, oh, oh yeah, you run around and do all this and all that. I will take that any day over having to work on them dogs. Yep. yep. And having to keep up with all them dogs and then I don't know. Yep. Oh yeah, it, it, it's 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 way easier. But I just I don't know, man. Back to that little list you sent me about judging or whatever. I mean, yeah. who got me into it or whatever? I mean, I've been really anybody listening to this podcast, anybody that knows me knows I could talk to a fence post. So I mean, I've always <laughs> I've always just been a conversation starter. So I've always talked to them older guys, and I've been lucky to 
you know, like anybody listening to this podcast, you ever get a chance to go judge a hunt that Clyde Sutton is yes. mastering, you do it. Yes. You go do it. Like, yes. That yep. man has been there. That man has done it. He has seen it. He's been to Grenade. I mean, he's he's done it all. And I could sit there and listen to him talk all day about he remembers this dog and he remembers when he did this and he remembers, you know, like I remember the other day you were talking about uh, the – the uh the perfect HGA score right in in Grenada. Well, I remember I can't remember where it was or anything, but I remember Mr. Sutton telling me a story one time about a dog with a perfect HGA. You know, he's seen that stuff. He's seen it. If it if it could happen, he could do it. And uh, a very very good friend of his, Mr. Pete Warren, used to run the uh oh I don't want to get this wrong. I want to say it was the Savannah running pen or Savannah Fox pen. It was in North Carolina somewhere. Mm-hmm. That was the pen he ran. And, uh, uh, I don't think he's doing too good health right now, but, uh, I told Clyde the other, the last time I saw him to tell him we were thinking about him, but it, right. those guys, I mean, they've done it all. They've seen it. They've, those are those old guys, but back yep. to what we were talking about earlier, those old guys aren't going to be there forever right. to do it. Right. And, and hell, this even the judging aspect to go to people talking smack about the scoring and the points at Billy Pools. Well, no offense to these old guys, because bless their heart for willing to come out there. You need to be able to be a little more agile in that pen normally yes. to get around yep. and scoring. Yep. Now, if you go to Creedmoor, I've done it. I've been there. You can literally go in some spots in there, and you can sit on a stool. And I'm not exaggerating. You can get 70 to 80 crossings a day without getting a sweat. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's just it's a different aspect. The points are going to be way bigger. Yep. But I still tell people all the time about judging. I mean, uh, it doesn't matter if you complain about the, anybody I hear complain. I'm like, come on, let's go judge. Right. It doesn't matter what you're complaining about. Any part of complaining, let's go judge. It'll straighten it out for you. Right. Like. Like you don't get why this happens. Let's go judge. Like I put on a, a one day speed and drive every day every year at Billy Pools. Right. Well, I'm I, it's my hunt. I put it on, so I stand at the gate with Demo, and as my judges pull up, I take the scores or whatever. Well, this judge he loved a four seventy one dog. Well, the next judge he loved a three thirty two dog. Well, the next judge loved the eight fifty five dog. They all loved a different dog. Well, next thing you know, all them dogs ended up only getting scored once or twice all day long, none of them even placed. Right. But right. they were great dogs. People don't realize that because Billy pulls at so many more dogs. Yeah. But the only way you will ever realize that or ever see that Get is him. to go judge. Yep. To go judge. You can stand on the outside of the pen and you can throw your aspects and think this and think that, but you'll never know or never realize until you go in there and see it for yourself. Yep. Yeah. I'm a firm uh, believer. Nope. A hundred percent. And that's, you know, you're a hundred percent correct on that. It, it's, that's a huge pet peeve of mine is sitting here listening to these guys complain, but never go in. But anyway, oh, yeah. you, you, you summed it up really, really well. But so anybody that's listening, John, what's, what is the best way for somebody that would like to get judging to start judging? What, what is, what well, is something that one, I mean, do? Well, one, like you said, um, well, how ninety percent of the people and I don't know that's a random ass number. I hate to say a number. Right, right. Majority right. of the people in this sport <laughs> are in this sport because of the goes back to deer hunting. Mm-hmm. Well, you're in a deer hunting club, and the majority of these clubs have fundraisers. Now, if you're in this club, nine times out of ten, it's mandatory for you to judge your hunt. Right. Well, what about your neighbor and hunt club? What about your sisters? boyfriend's hunt club what about your you know your girlfriend's dad hunt club you know like these people i can promise you anybody listening to this podcast you know a hunt club that has a hunt at billy pools in a 840 acre fox preserve they will say yes please come judge yeah um there's plenty of benefit hunts i mean there's everything and then I mean, everybody knows everybody nowadays. Like these guys that run that run all these three days. Well, instead of calling to get numbers, why don't you call and ask them if they need help judging? Yes. And the other, there was another thing I thought of just today that I wanted to briefly talk about because that's, you know, we talk about a hunt club hunt. Yes. Oh, yes. Please, we'll have eighty judges. Well, the sad part about it is those three days they can't have. But so many judges because yeah. of the judges' expenses. Yeah, exactly. And that's something that you want to talk about. Like, that really irks my nerves sometimes. And, like, oh, 100%, you should not be paying for your 
hotel room if you're coming down here. And I'm even all for the gas or whatever. But there's a lot of judges that take advantage of this uh, free meals and stuff like that. And, you, you know, like, I don't really – I've never really turned in a receipt for a meal when I judged a three-day because – quite frankly, I'm going to eat anyway. Right. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> right. oh, so these people are going to, like, I, I, I don't know, like, and, and until you get to judging and until you really get to realizing how much money these three days spend on the expenses, yep. that's why they don't make any money. Exactly. These three days, these three days, these FHAs, the average one is, is it's put on out of the pure love of the sport. Yep. And it's probably no breaking income. even, if it, not it, losing money lucky. every year. I don't see how the Millers. Oh my gosh, uh, man! I, I feel like they have to go in the hole, like with the Tidewater Association, with as much stuff as they give back and all that. I know they get a pile donated, and Heather and Todd and everybody else. I'm not just saying the Millers, but everybody yeah, yeah, yeah. in that association. Uh, they work very, very hard for that. But it, it, it's the judges. But still, get up with your FHAs, and you know there's still. I think one of the bad things nowadays is all the invites. Like, mm -hmm. like a lot of invites get wasted. You know, like they a lot of these FHAs sometimes they'll invite people that they think look good on paper, but then they're not the ones that show up. You know, yep. like, yep. like, and and just people on here know me. They know you. They know uh, they know Kyle. Maybe they know Stacy Hilton. They know. Dustin Morris, they know, I mean, Angie and Bobby McGinnis. I mean, they know uh, anybody in here in Central Virginia. You know somebody on the state of the board with the Virginia State Fox Hunters Association. I mean, it's so many. You just tell them, like, hey, man, I wouldn't mind trying to help judge next year. You know, like, and they'll write it down, and you got to be invited, and you got to be voted on, and this and that. But get your name in there, and once you judge one of them, somebody's going to remember that, and they, you'll get in the next one. Oh, and, man, dude. I mean, and, it's and, – and, and, and it's also another thing where it, I say yes all the time. Yeah. But these people are going to ask 100 people, and they know 75 of them are going to say no. Don't feel obligated that you, you have to judge because yes. you don't. Yep. I like to do it. I, I, I'm lucky. I'm 32 years old. I, uh, I, I can get down there, and I can do it. I'm not going to say I'm lucky, but I have – you know, a lot of people have – you know, they work on Saturdays or their kids play ball on Saturdays or, you know, all this stuff. You know, well, me and my girlfriend, we don't have any kids. So I can I can get down there and I can do you – know, I'm very lucky as far as the aspect of my girlfriend allowing me to do it. You know, I can right. say and <laughs> right. I'm very lucky. I'm very, very lucky on her aspect of it because I'm sure some guys – you know, we all like to act big and bad, but I'm not lying. When I'm Emily, I'm going to the Fox Bend tomorrow. Okay, you know she right. she's all cool for it. She's yeah. all for it. Yeah. She knows I enjoy it. She knows I love it. She right. knows she knows it's what I like to do. And, and uh, you know, you brought up a really good point too. And it, and it's and this this sounds kind of cliche about where we were going with that topic, but it's at the same time you 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 really reminded me of this year. You know, after I judged the the Southeastern in the beginning of the year. I got asked uh -huh. so, and I think even beginning or at the end of last year, I got asked after I judged the dismal. I got asked by so many people, and, th and there's one that I do regret doing. Mike Hearn asked me to, to judge the 2022 uh, Southern Classic Open, and I turned him down because uh -huh. I had stuff going. And I regret that, you know, now that he's he's passed and gone on, I regret that one a ton. But that's how it's uh -huh. like 2020. But you will be asked, and I felt so bad because I turned down a couple hunts this year because I wanted to run in them. But that You're goes back to, to what we out. talked about earlier: is if you can judge at least one or two of these three days, if you, especially if you get asked to do it, that's the world of difference. Oh yeah, one of my <laughs> talking about turning down. I got. I mean, I, it was kind of my goal all year. I got invited to judge the. American Invitational Running Hound Classic at Tar River. Mm. And I was like, I'm going. I was like, that's going to be the deal. Well, one of my kennel partners had decided he wanted to run in it. And, and that was his right to want to run in it. He had worked with his dogs this year just as hard as I had worked with my dogs. And his dogs were qualified. Right. So 100% he'd go down there. Could I have probably still went and judged and it would have probably been okay. Nobody would have really said nothing. I think so, yes. But I wasn't going to even question doing that yep 
Yep, that's and respectful it, too. That's respectful. It's respect. And he ended up. He didn't even place a dog. We would have been perfectly fine. Nobody would even realized, you know. But nope, right. fuck that. Yep. My luck, he would have won the hunt, you know. And then who's to say something, you know? Right. And I would have never done anything in a million years to help anybody's dogs. But what would it look like for him? And then he would have felt like that, like you were talking about yep. a respectful thing. You know yep. what I'm saying? I was respecting his choice. Right. I should have probably when I thought it was – I had a couple dogs that were qualified. Now, obviously, Bossman was qualified, but I thought it was just a little too close. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. And I <laughs> – we were talking about the style of dog. I mean, I would have been going down there. I think he can run down there, but I would have been going down there with my fingers crossed, hoping <laughs> and begging – for a hunting score yep. all three days. Cause I know. I mean, I've judged down there. Yep. The dog's not running with those dogs down there. Yep. That's exactly why I, I stayed my butt at home. Goes, it goes back to judging. How do I know that? Because I've judged down there. Right. Right. And I, I don't know. I just, I think the judging aspect of it, uh, why do I judge down there? Because I want to eventually run some three days down there at Creedmoor. Yeah. But I told myself that I was going to go see what it was about before I did that. Right. I'm not just going to throw my dogs to the wolves not knowing what they are. They they deserve more than that, and I think more of them to do that, you yeah, know? that's right. That's right. And I think a lot of people in this sport could could uh, benefit if they had that same outlook on it. Yes. Yes, and I, I – yeah. I mean, that, that's, and I'm not – I don't know. It's all opinion, like Mr. Murphy – like Mr. Steve Murphy said. Everything I'm saying tonight is all opinion. <laughs> right. It's, it's, right. It's – I don't know. So let's let let's take that right there. Let's 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 take that and roll into the next. Okay. All right. The, the, with the rules, do you okay. see a need for uh, you know that that's a big thing? And, and I'll and I'll add the you know uh, kind of tag along with this one with the last one. If, if you're going to get into judging, find a rule book. Find a exactly rule book. Right. Read it front to back. I don't care how There's boring a, it gets. Get it. You don't know how many people don't know the difference in the five minute block system or five minute interval system. Right. You know, right. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, it's so it's, and it could change the whole aspect of a hunt, you know, the way you look at it or whatever. I mean, uh, I mean, it's this thing I've got, I had in the, it's in the rule book and the way it reads it, it says, I've got it right here. It says, you know, say if it's between seven and seven Oh four, if cash was at seven, that would be a block. Right. And then 705 to 709 would be a block. Right. And say if the dog gets scored, oh, what does it say, third place at 703 and 709, but then it had a first place at 705, well, if it was a block score and the dog would get 60 points, if it was an interval, the dog's only going to get 50. Right. And that would matter, and it all matters because in one situation he can keep – both the first and the third because they're in a different block. But then in the other situation, he's got to keep five minutes apart. All he can keep is the two third place crossings. Right. Which in a situation there, you would always think, well, why would you keep the first place crossing? Because you can keep two third place crossings and that equals more. Hmm. But hmm. I, it, the, everybody should, I think, like I was saying about reading the rule book before I mastered that hunt, I was freaking out. I love <laughs> I, I like notes. I like reading a little thing. Hell, there's there's highlighted things in this rule book right here in this master's rule book. You know, just little things like little things like that. I did the you know, same I, I think, thing before the southeastern. I, I think we talked about it earlier about the rules about how it's amazing how good those guys did back then with those rules and how. Um, I, one of my I've heard you say it before in one of my ultimate bucket list, Mister Gary Verlin. God bless his soul. He told me, he said, John, he said, if you don't do anything else, he said, before you die, he said, you need to get to Grenada, Mississippi. Yes, sir. He said, that's what you need to do. He said, he said, no matter what hunt you go down there for, he said, but he said, if you go for any of them, he said, you're going to have to go back and go for the national and the chair. <laughs> right. And, and, and one of my biggest, like we're sitting here talking about the rules, change this, change that, maybe change that. I would love to go down there and listen to that meeting at the national. Yes. Yep. When you could bring something up, like say you had something you wanted to bring up, you could bring it up, or maybe you could just sit back and listen. I would love to. I don't know. That's right. one of my biggest. Uh, I was listening to Chris Powell on your podcast talking about when he goes to Merle Hogue's pen and right. how Chris and Angela always go to Grenada and all this. Like that is what I really want to change and start doing more this year. I want to start traveling. Yes. Like I love yes. Billy Pools. I love it to death. That is my bread and butter. I yep. will field travel. But I want to go 
I want to go some places. I want to go see these people. I want to go stand around these, 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 the fire barrels, these, these fire legends. barrels that they talk about with these legends and listen to their stories about yep. this and that. You know, yep. I want to see the different yep. terrain, the different style of hunting. I want to go to Swainsboro, something fierce. I do too. I do too. I really do. Yep. I know, uh, what's your, uh, what, Mr. Bobby Parker? Bobby Parker, yes, that's right. Yep. Yeah. Uh, does it, now, how far are they from that pin? He's you know? not. He's not far. He's not far. That's huh. I guess quote unquote. That's his. It's his home turf. That'd be like Billy Pool. His that Swainsboro is his Billy Pools for us. Yeah, ten four. All yeah. right. Yeah. So yeah, I would. I'd love to go down there. I mean, what is that pin? Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen hundred acres. Man, I've, I've heard, heard it was eight. 100 acres, but I think somebody said they made it smaller. Yeah, I, don't I, know. I think that I, I can't remember. It's it's huge. I know that. <laughs> Everybody says it's I like running that. an outside field trial inside a wire. Yeah. But, man, so as far as do you know the rule book, is there any, you know, is there any revisions one that you thing, see? <sighs> I don't know. That seems and to be a very say, hot topic. That's a very hot yeah, topic I, when you go to talk about rules. There's, I like the, uh, I wouldn't mind. I like both rules. Mm -hmm. I like both sets of rules. I think both sets of rules are, you know, I, I was listening to Todd Miller's podcast the other night about how he used, they changed the tide water to the, to the, to the GTP, GTP to the yeah. masters. Right. Well, you know, everybody talks, you know, the trailing and hunting dog, whatever. Well, I went back and I did the math. And you know, if, if the, if the Southern classic had been, had been a, GTP, I'm, I'm, I, I could be wrong, but I'm about ninety five percent sure my dog would have still won. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he would have still won. Right, he would have still won the hunt. Yep. And uh, and 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 uh, and now I'm not just saying if he had just had that hunting and trailing score, he probably wouldn't have. But the fact that he had, hell, that dog had, uh, he was in the top twenty speed and drive. He right. Finished seventeenth or eighteenth speed and drive. You know, I mean, that would have helped him. He would have finished. He would have won the hunt. Yeah. But uh. I think one thing that's bothered me, and I don't even know if it's really a rule. I guess it is a rule. I guess it is a rule that's bothered me ever since I started judging. Mm -hmm. Was a running alone score. Ah, yeah. And, yes, the great and debate. I've always, I've always felt like a running alone score should be a judge's discretion, a des judge's decision, almost like a hunting score. You yeah. know, like, I don't know. When it comes down to it, is the – uh, is the dog running a red fox ten minutes after cast deserved by himself? Deserved the same as a dog running a red fox by himself ten minutes mm -hmm. before the hunt's over? Right. You know what I'm saying? Yep. yep. I remember. I remember this. I guess this is 2023, 2022. I'm not gonna lie. It was either last year. I think it was like. I think it might have been two years ago. It might have been 2021. Right. I had been I had been judging the East Coast Masters. It was day three. I had been in the pen. It was last year. It was last year. I know. I had been in the pen for fourteen and a half hours between the first two and a half three days. You know, right. we had thirty minutes left in the hunt. All I had seen all weekend long was a coyote. <laughs> Nothing against a coyote, but right. I'm a fox hunter. I love running these foxes. You know, right. Well, we had like twenty eight minutes left. And I hear old dog get something going in the cutover over there, and I look up the path, and out shoots a gray fox. Dog comes out running it by himself. I score him running alone. Fox does a loop, comes out behind me. I score him alone. He does a loop. I scored the dog four or five times right there running alone. Right. I walk down, Mr. The old legend, Mr. Jerry Riddick. Yep. He was down there, and he seen me scoring the dog. He said, man, that dog could run that thing, couldn't it, John? I said, yeah. And he said, you know, it's a damn shame he can't get but 20 points. Yep. And, you know, I had scored that dog three or four times, but it was all within the same block. Yeah. In the five-minute block system. Yep. The yep. dog literally ran that fox around us for two or three minutes. I got five or six crossings on it, and the dog literally left that cutover with 20-point 20 20 speed points. and drive. Yep. That's all he got out of the whole thing. Yep. And I'm like, man, there's some sorry – I mean, I'm not going to say some sorry-ass dog, but there's some dog running around here following, running fourth place. And he's got the same amount same of points amount. as this dog. Does. And this dog was just working his tail off, yep. running this piece of game around. Yep. And uh, I think I don't know. I'm I, with that, you. That I, I think a dog maybe somebody could bring up, yeah. but I, I, mean, I think maybe a dog could, deserves more than twenty know. points. I really do. Yeah, I just I don't know. And there's always, you know, I've heard people say, "Well, then just say you missed the next dog." Well, that ain't how you're supposed to do it. Right. Now right. I'm gonna do it. That ain't what the judge. 
the rule book states a dog running alone is supposed to receive 20 points. It's what it's going to receive. Yep. And and I, I just, I don't know. I think that's something that could be changed. Uh, not changed. It could be talked about. It's got its arguments for both ways because people do have a valid excuse. But when they say, well, that dog should have been looking for this or that, well, if the dog is only running to a certain extent, then only give it 20 points. Right. But if the dog is running a piece of game like the game is pe- supposed to be ran, he shouldn't get this. He shouldn't be penalized because nobody's running behind him. Yes, that's you know right. what I'm saying. That's right. You yeah. know, I, I don't yeah. know. I, that's I mean, just something I always thought of. And I remember that day leaving Creedmoor. I remember it. I rode all the way home. It was last year because it was, I, it was the day I tore my meniscus, <laughs> and I rode home in all this pain. And I was thinking more about this damn dog that only got 20 points. Yep. Yep, I've, I've been I've been there. That it, I'm like you. It's like, man, I've watched a dog come across a path at Billy Pools one time. I think it was it was either there or Hollywood, and I mean he was I mean he they was breathing the same oxygen as this fox. I mean, oh, yeah. absolutely, just gut punching this fox across across the road by himself. Twenty yeah. points. That dog was. I don't care well, if there was a hundred dogs in that crossing. That dog should have got 35 points. He should have got well, the full score. Well, that was like the uh, – when I said I gave that trailing score to that dog at Chad Perkins that time at mm-hmm. uh, at uh, – what dog? It was number 91 it was, and uh, it was blacktop. And when the dog – we watched the dog hunt up that fox. We had seen the fox go in that brush pile. This is when they first cut the cut over and back there on the big hill. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, it was, it was bare, and it had that – you know, if you go up the hill, it's a big brush pile right there on the left. This, all the dogs came down, and that dog went over there, and all the dogs went away, and that dog got to hunt and trailed up that fox, and it ran across the road. We scored it running alone. Right. In the situation right there, I thought, I was like, God, hey, yeah, don't get me wrong. I gave him the hunt, and I gave him the trailing, but damn, I wish I could give him more than 20 points running. Yep. You know? I mean, yep. I, and, uh, the crazy thing about that was, was uh, that dog ended up finishing second in that hunt and lost by like a point or two. Oh. Man. It got scored all the way across the board. If it had been a national hunt, he would have made champion. Yep. Actually, Damn. my good Kevin Meadows won that hunt. I yep. won't forget I think it. That's right. Meadows yep. won that hunt. But yep. that old Tesla yep. dog. But yep. see, stuff like that, not judging, man. Like, yeah. I remember those dogs. I remember judging Tesla against Blacktop. Like, I remember them battling it out. I think that might have been the year. Uh, I, I can't uh, I can't remember what dogs Brandon Wise not had up there, but he had something up there, something good. You know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, yep. you get to what well, you get in there, you get part of it, and you get to watch that, and you get one of the craziest hunts I've ever judged, and it was the last hunt I judged this year, the East Coast Masters. Right. That little Izzy dog of, of Vaden Bonds and them guys, Triple B Kennels. Yep. And and uh, uh I'm not gonna guess, so I, I don't want to be wrong, but whatever dog it was, a James race. Yeah. It was four eleven and eight eleven. The last day, they were sitting first and second. Right. And the last about hour and a half of the hunt, these dogs got in a pack together, and they got to fighting for it. Oh, and they got this. Dog. This dog was fourth. Then they come back around. This dog's third. This dog was first. Well, then they're first and second. Man, you get to see that stuff. Yep. You know, everybody's up there at the gate having fun. They get these crossings. Get the girl crossings. They're not going to see what you're seeing in there. That's it. That stuff's fun. I mean, it's cool. I mean. That's it. That was kind of picture perfect. We kind of dreamed of that. I mean, I remember me and Colby talking about it on the way home, like, wow, because he was seeing it too. I mean, everybody in the pen was, all those judges were, because yep. they were in the same pack. And you can't ask for that. You can't oh, no, you could And now, of course, I ain't going to lie, in a pen like that, it's a little bit different than saying somewhere like Billy Pools. Yeah, you yeah. Get a lot well, more, hell, but even Billy, Billy Pools, you know, to I watch took, them both work. I, you know, last year at the Dismal, last year at the Dismal is what made me breed my sergeant bitch to a chrome. I remember oh, very yeah. specifically that last year that was one of the few hunts I've ever judged where the derby was the uh oh my god the, they absolutely they were, like we were talking about everything. earlier about the derby about the derby getting lucky nah there was plenty of crossings there the derby was leading yep yep and that's mm-hmm. that was the hunt I was like I mean I there was I think it was number 10 if I remember right it's been a year and I'm not good at remembering things like that but I swear it was number 10. That dog, every time he come across the road, it was coming across with authority. It was usually first or second. I mean, just doing everything you could ever ask out of a field trial dog. I fell in love with that dog. And it was several other dogs that mimicked it. And I was like, man, I was like, what are these dogs? And every single one of them was off chrome. And I was You're like, exactly right. I was like, God, I got to have it. 
I got to have it in my life. I have to have it. And that's, that was one of the, my key things of why I fell in love with judging. And people might have thought, heard me a minute ago talking about saying that was a Chad Perkins dog that I gave that trailing school. Well, the whole reason I know it's Chad's dog is because when, you, when you're judging and you watch a dog do something like that, you're going to find out whose dog that Damn is. You're right. going to find out yep. the breeding of that dog because you want to better your breeding at your house. And, yep. you know, yep. I remember we tried to go down there and breed to that black top dog of Chad's and it couldn't, he, he just, he couldn't get right, but we ended up breeding to Chad's bird dog. He called the dog bird dog. Yeah, whole bird dog. Very good cross. And we took a, we took a jip down there off of, a off a of co-pilot and a Cabral's chill. Uh, we, uh, the dog's name is Bennett's Chili. We got her from DJ and Mary Carol and Mr. Dwayne Bennett and all them down there. Very nice, Joe. Right. And uh, we ended up loving them dogs off Bird Dog, but that was another thing. Like, like me, me. When when you see a dog that's that nice, and you know the man that owns the dog, you know it kind of like, like I always knew Chad was a dog man. But when I seen that, when I seen that black top dog working, I mean, I kind of, you know, mm-hmm. I kind of start chad a little bit more so when we went down there to breed and chad said man i'm telling you blacktop's a good dog he's like but this bird dog though is a real nice dog well damn if 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 blacktop's that nice and he thinks this dog's even nicer well i'm gonna take his word for it all right like and i don't know that's 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 the cool yeah i would have never i would have never in a million years bred the blacktop if i hadn't or yep. even tried to breed to him if i hadn't judged him you know yep, yep. i mean well, judging's the reason i fell in love with zeke that one of the first hunts I ever oh, yeah. judged, I, I watched Zeke work, and I'm a white dog man, so I, I drew to him anyway. But watching that dog work, I fell in love with that dog, and I made sure I found out who had that dog. Well, they used to run on them 752, 752. I think. 752. Yep, I'll never forget that number. Never forget yeah, that. Yeah, I followed that dog quite a few times around Billy Pool. Yep, 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 yep. So That's- you know, for for time purposes here, you know, we're rolling up on two hours actually. So let, let's kind of move into uh, one of the last, you know, not, not the last topic, but, you know, you mentioned it earlier. And this is, a, this is a big topic of discussion that seems to, I don't think it'll ever actually be put in place. But in your opinion, and I, I have my own opinion, I, I'll, I'll tack to it after yours. What is your opinion on forcing people to judge a hunt? Like, oh, forcing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, if, if well, you're, you know, I've always I heard it I don't think it should be forced. Well, I mean, I don't know how you could do it. Yeah, that's the thing. I that's, don't yeah. know why you would do it. And I don't think it should ever be, per se, mandatory. But, like we said earlier in this, I don't see why a person would want to. Yes. Like, I honestly don't. Oh, I'm not in this sport for that. Well, what are you in the sport for? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> right. like, like we're, everybody's here to help everybody. We'll show it a little bit. Like, come on, man. Like, let's judge some hunts. And I mean, maybe it'll change your eyes on the dog. You right. know, maybe it'll change your eyes on your dog, you know? Right. And there's plenty of people there. There's people I see judging plenty of hunts that are some of the greatest houndsmen I've ever met. There's people that I see that are greatest houndsmen I've ever met that I've never seen judge a hunt. You know, right. it's both sides. Right. And I'm not saying that. I'm not saying nothing I've said to not tonight in no aspect means, oh, you've got to judge if you want to be a houndsman. No. Judging made me a better houndsman, though. But right. I was, look, I, was, I wasn't, uh, let's say, Colby Taylor, great judge. Colby Taylor can tell you stories as far back as he can remember of his daddy and his uncles messing with fox dogs. I don't have that. Right. I don't have you know, I was 20, 21 years old before I had a fox dog, and I had to learn a way. I didn't have these years of experience that everybody else did. So I used the judging as a way to learn, to, right? to get around. And yep. I don't know. Yep. But no. I still think – I think it should be a, a – a, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know if you could ever make it mandatory because how could, how could you? Like yeah. the first time of the year, nobody would ever judge. You know what I'm right. saying? Or, or maybe right. the first time of the year, everybody yeah. would want to judge so they wouldn't have to judge the rest. You yeah. know? I mean, don't get me wrong. I would love to see – something implemented even if and i've always I, i've had the idea of of if you so if i you know i ran the tidewater this year so next year i should judge it yeah you know i ran the southern you know the southern classic open this year next year i should judge it 
You know, and I know that's well, I know. Not, not necessarily the, uh, practical for everybody to do that. But I know the uh, good hunters up here, uh, Sean Knuckles and uh, Bucky Jones, Brian mm-hmm. Fox Kennel. Yep. Um, I think this year they judged the Southern Classic, I believe it was, and I think next year they said that they're going to pick a different one. They're going to instead of running it, they're going to they're going to judge that one, and maybe next year they're going to run the Southern Classic Open. And I think that's a good way to look at it. Yeah, a good way. Yep. Everybody can do it, and just oh, uh, I can promise you when sh- when when Sean and uh when Bucky got in contact with Stacy Hilton or Angie McGinnis or whoever mm-hmm. they got up with to judge the. Maybe a couple of years ago it was Mike Kearns. I promise y'all, they didn't have to twist their arms to let them in. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. Like, right. Like, 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 don't feel like, well, I've never judged one before because I felt like that too, and I was very fortunate with Mike Kearns to get me going. Yep. But I just, like I said, I don't know why nobody would want to. Like, yep. I'm with it's, you. It's honestly a good time. Hell, they're going to feed you. You're right. going to eat. Big Tim's going to feed you. Yep. Uh, you're going to learn a whole lot different aspect of that pen not even just Billy Pools. I'm talking about Billy Pools. But anywhere you judge, you're going to get a different aspect of yep. it. You know what I'm saying? Yep. yep. And yep. even to just start off at your local little small pins. I mean, yep. I'm yep. saying on this podcast, this podcast is way, hopefully way bigger than just right here around us. So, I mean, these people all over the place. I mean, and I think a lot more, it's tough on these hunts around us because, I mean, a lot of people, it's tough judging. Yeah. A lot of these hunts yep. around home are midnight to 5 a.m. Yes. Or, yep four to eight a.m. and you know you want to talk about an aspect of judging judging with the lights a totally different aspect of judging. <laughs> i it hate really judging is. with the light i hate it but it's what you got i do hate sometimes. it but then again i love it because i love running a red fox and yeah i just know that red fox likes to run when it's dark That's you know it. and yep. i've learned you know like ju- one of my favorite hunts to judge is the night on the not away at billy pools man it's just mm-hmm. you put 350 dogs in that place at nighttime man you, and you don't know which way to burner. run. You don't know which way to run. You're you're standing there and you 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 miss. I think I got. Uh, let me see. I got twenty. I got twenty nine crossings that night. I was on Hearns Road, and I guarantee I missed forty. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, yep. like it's. Yep. I don't know. It's fun. Yeah. I like it, but I think it should be. <laughs> yep. It's hard to say. Like we said, it's hard to ever say it should be mandatory because who's going to be the guy that. Right. Keeps a little calculator of, oh, you didn't judge a hunt this year. You yep, can't come. Yeah. Yep. But I just think it should be like we're all houndsmen and women. Like, right. Let's nut up and let's and do pull it. our part. You yep. know, like, right. Like, I, I feel like, I, I, like I said, it's a thankless job, but it's not because I felt good at the end of the year. I feel good. People, I walk around and uh, people see me judging. They're like, oh, John's judging, you know. And, mm-hmm. But 10 years ago, like I said, they probably didn't say that. They were probably like, look at this dude. Like, he probably ain't got a clue. You know, I and, didn't have a clue. Me and my I kennel, didn't have a clue. Me and my kennel partner talk about it every time we go down there. And we go, we go and we see who's driving in, you know, to go judging. Oh, yeah. And it's see if like, you recognize him or not. See if you know him. See yep. if you can – See if you, well, I know that guy. I've judged with him before. I know he's a good judge. There's, you know there's, what I'm saying? There's two people that I look for every time that I know are going to 100% get after it and give everything that they have all five hours, and they're going to do it 100% <laughs> correct, and that's you and Peyton Lucy. Oh, yeah. Both I've learned of y'all, a lot. Peyton has been a big part of, of helping me a lot with the judging side. And he's, I mean. Peyton goes back to. What I was just saying, though, and, I mean, you're kind of on my side of this. Peyton's dad, Wade Lucy, was yeah. he's a fox hunting legend. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and, right. and Peyton cannot think back his furthest back memory. He can't think of a day when there wasn't a foxhound in his backyard. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? And that, I, 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 I could be wrong. I know I am. I'm, I'm three or four years older than Peyton Lucy. Right, but I look up to that guy in this sport. Yep, because it comes down to experience, and he's got way more of it than I do. Right, you know what I'm saying? Right, and 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 that's who you have to. He's taught me so much about judging. I remember years ago, uh, we were judging. I think it was the dismal, and it, or maybe the Virginia State, and it was me, him, Skeeter Holloway, and Hunter Thompson. Right. And we had the emu cut over surrounded, and this was when it was short. You could see with binoculars and stuff. And we were on radios, and we were communicating, and these dogs were out there hunting, and we got a couple. I remember uh, 
uh, some dogs got some foxes up out there in front of us, you know, and we just had a ball out there. Yep. And I, Hunter Thompson is another one. He's younger than me. And I can tell you one thing, he's a hell of a class A, 100% good fox hound judge. When right. you see him there, you know people are going to be looking at the dogs right. Yep. And people might laugh at Hunter. Hunter's going to get out of the truck. He's going to have Crocs on. He's going <laughs> to be like, what the hell? That boy's going to be across that bear cut over cut over knee deep and he's across it in crocs quarter and you get over it with boots i don't know how he does it. i don't know either but, <laughs> but i remember that day i'll never forget it and those three guys i remember sitting back thinking like john you need to take this in like these guys know what they're doing and this is a perfect aspect of these fo these dogs working up these foxes in this cutover, and you're sitting here getting to watch these judges work. I was sitting yep. in the tripod on Uncle Walter's path, on Uncle Walter's path right there, and I could see the whole emu with my binoculars. Mm -hmm. I could see the dogs, the foxes, and I could see them. Yep. Yep. And, I I learned about them. and you make a really good point. Like I feel like, and I, you know, a lot of people, like I said, it was it was a rough time for Billy Pools as far as the running goes. But I judged a lot during that time. And I did too. I learned so much. Like you just said, I remember judging in Bookerville. And oh, yeah. I was when able to. Yeah, did you well, ever no, judge it no, no, no. This was when it was the yeah. clear, like flat. Like yeah. you could see all the way down to, to, to the halfway point. And you should have seen it when it was tall trees, man. God, it was fun in there. Oh, my gosh. That's what I've always heard. But the great part about it was is I was not only able to watch – dogs and fox and all that kind of stuff but like you just said i was able to watch i remember watching clyde sutton oh yeah down i forgot what road it was but i watched him and how he maneuvered oh yeah and how he I got in front of these dogs and i was like man that's that was smart how he made that move and that was that another was, great one another great one in that and i learned a bunch i learned a bunch like you were talking about how they move and how they get in front of Kelly Meadows. Yeah, yeah. Anybody, old Kelly Meadows. And and I'm not saying any names. Not I'm going to forget a hundred of them. But people like him and and Cody Hawkins, I talked about him earlier, man. Them guys taught me so much about how to judge a fox. And right. I don't even know if they know that they taught me that. But I just would listen to <laughs> yep. them. You know, like, yep. like we get done judging. I go in there, I get my little styrofoam plate from Big Tim, and I'm going to find Kelly. I'm going to sit next to Kelly. I'm going to see what he saw. I'm going to listen to him. I'm going to listen to where he was. Back in the day when it wasn't that much running, and you would be lucky to get a couple crossings a day, Kelly always had a couple crossings. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, yep. like, like, damn, how is he doing this so much better than me? And it gets back to, like, like – I started judging to become a better dog man and to make my dogs better. But then I wanted to become a better judge. Like, right. like I want to be the guy that comes out with the most crossings on these days that are shitty. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like and I always remember listening to Kelly and when a race would get going, you know, they get to almost, you're almost deer hunting in there. Cause when the yep. races are black and they get to racing, you need to know where to go. Well, Kelly was always there. Yep. He was always there. Yep. And I just thought that was so cool. And we've got a spot to this day, you know where it is between the, between the uh, first crossroads and the mouth of the feed road and that yep. bottom, we all call bottom. it to this day. We call it Cody Hawkins spot. Cody's that's spot. That's it. it. <laughs> yep. spot. And, and Cody's one another one. He's always in the mix. He was yep. always in the mix. He's always there. And I've learned so much from those guys. And it's just so fun uh, judging. And I don't know. I, I, I totally – anybody – you should want to do it and it gives you a different aspect of the sport and it gives you a different respect for the sport and it gives you a different, I don't know. It's yep. just, I love it. Yep. I love it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I mean, and don't get me <laughs> wrong this year. I judged some three days and I got home and I looked at boss man yep. and I looked at Mount man. I said, damn boys, y'all could probably run with these guys, <laughs> right. but we'll be all right. We'll get them next month. That's you know what it. I'm saying? I didn't ever regret it. And maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't say I don't regret it because I think these dogs deserve to get their name out there maybe a little more. And they, the only way you're going to get a dog's name out there more is to field trial. It. Right. Well, I can't field trial it when I'm in there judging. And yep. I'm sure that's where a bunch of these guys think of it. They're like, you know, this thing's uh, – a, a, a man's ego is a heavy burden for a dog to that's carry. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And, 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 and uh, that's what this sport has came to. It's all about the name and who does this and who does that. And you're never going to get a big name being in the judging woods. But – it's just part of it to me, and I, I don't know. Right. I love it. Yep. I wouldn't give it for nothing. I love it. So let's let's hit our last topic real quick. I mean, you kind of talked about it before. Right. We're going to combine the two. 
So uh, I, you know, I, and for those listening, you know, I, my guest, I give him two or three topics to choose from for the last topic. And me and John talked about it and he wanted to combine, you know, is the sport going in the right direction and what do we need to do to keep the sport going? So I will let you take the wheel. I think that's a, uh, it's a, that's a very close topic that a lot of everybody in this podcast has been speaking of. And I think it's probably the number one topic that should be spoken about in this podcast, because quite frankly, if this sport doesn't keep going or if it doesn't keep going in the quite right direction, what's the use of having this podcast? (laughs) Right. (laughs) Right. And and I think, I thank you because I mean, everybody's got their thoughts and everything. Even at first I might, I might as well even, and this podcast is doing good things for it and it's going to help everybody. I think, uh, I remember like you were talking to, uh, I'm sorry, I can't think of the name. What's the man's name that, uh, wrote the book about uh, beard Austin. Yep. Austin you, Thomas. you said when, when you first heard about it, you were kind of like, Oh God, I hope it's good. You know what I'm saying? Right. Well, that's kind of what I almost thought about this podcast. I was like, man, I hope this goes in the right direction. And it 100% is. Well, I I've listened that. to every episode. I like it, but I think, I think what we were talking about earlier, what Beach Billy and all of them are going with, we have the numbers. We have the numbers. The The fox hunting community, not only in the state of Virginia, but in the United States of America, is probably the largest militia in the world. Yep. Like, we could probably take on Russia. Like, I mean, <laughs> you talk right. about, you talk about, like, high-end sharpshooters with private band radios and their vehicles full wheel drives like we are a militia and like we're numbers and we it's time we stand together and i'm not saying we need to go to war yeah, or nothing yeah, like yeah, that yeah, but yeah. when it's time for people to go to thir- a thursday meeting at 10 a.m we need to have more than 72 people show up yep. and i don't want to get on here and sit here and say political this political that because i'm not very good with that stuff and people like beach billy or todd miller or kirby birch you know those are people that are really people that are good for it right that would be that would be somebody good for you to try to get on here mr kirby Burke. I'm, I'm working on him i'm working yeah, on that him. we'll try to get him on after the holiday fun. seasons man he you want to talk about a, a and you talk about being around that man's been there he knows yep. what goes around in those in those richmond meetings uh, a little bit i've talked to kirby and been around kirby i've learned a lot about it from him but yeah those guys yep. know a lot more but i think it comes down to everybody needs to be in the uh, if you're not in the Virginia Hunt and Dog Alliance, you need to become a member. 2024, make sure you're a member. Yep. You need to make sure everybody in your hunt club is a member. You need to make sure that your, your hunt club, club yeah. is a member. You yeah. know, uh, it's a small donation. It's very small. It's very small, but those those numbers go towards it. When Todd and them, I need to get better about it. I meant to go this year, but next year I'm going I'm to make it a point. Whether I run, judge, donate, do something, I'm going to go down there and make sure I help with any hunting dog alliance hunt. I know Todd and them do the one at pools every year. Right. I need to do, go hunt. Yeah. That is one thing, uh, kind of switching the topic a yeah. little bit, but one thing I wanted to say that hunts don't get realized, uh, that benefit hunt I put on this year and talking about judging and or whatever, but right. I put on a hunt this year at a pen close to home for a boy that had brain cancer and he's got a rare form of brain cancer. His, uh, his mom and dad are both pretty close friends of mine. We're not as close as we used to be, but we at one time we were very close. And that fox hunt and one night raised twenty five thousand mm. dollars. And you know, mm. those are the stories that need to be out here when yep. we go to Richmond. Right. You know, when we go, you know, like what are those 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 damn guys over there talking about uh, the politicians? All this. What have they ever done for a boy with brain cancer? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like right. Like. Everybody looks at fox hunting or dog hunters as these rough neck, rough neck rednecks, and we're all out to do this. No, it ain't. It ain't like that at all. Yep. It ain't. It ain't yep. even close to that. And yep. and the more you get into the, the more you get into the field trial and in the fox pen and all that, really the classier and classier it gets. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yep, I agree like, 100. Like percent This this is a very 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 expensive hobby, and it's not really very trashy people that do it. That's you know right. what I'm saying? Like, That's right. Yep. Like these people, uh, and I think we have the numbers. I think the sport is popular. It's got to be more popular than it's ever been. Yep. It's it's impossible if you don't have a fox pen or know somebody that does. You're not getting in one. Right. There's no need to be. There's no need even trying. I mean, it's impossible. Right. Oh, uh, it's especially but, in Virginia. But then, yeah, but then you turn around in February. There's a meeting and there's 17 people there. Right. 
it don't look too popular, does right. it? And I, I say this to myself too, because I need to do it. But I think it. Uh, I think it, it, it. Everybody needs to do that, and I think in order to keep the the sport going, you need to get kids involved. Yeah. I don't. I don't have any kids, but I love. I would just as much rather. The other day we had a drive going, and. And what we did is we lined it all up for the kids. Now, right. of course, doe season's not in down there, so we, we you know, them kids, they're free doe tags, you know. Yeah. Them kids can kill them doe, so we put them kids on the good stands. We right. wanted them to shoot. Yep. Now, and it's it's all for it, and, and you want them kids to shoot because you want them kids to enjoy it. You don't want that kid to be out there all day just bored out of his mind, you know, Right. all that. You want the kids to have fun. But it's not only kids. It's like that story you put on Facebook the other week or last week, whenever it was about you taking those people hunting. Right. That killed that deer. Yep. Well, they had ne- that guy had been dog hunting. He had been a different aspect of dog hunting. He had never been deer dog hunting. Mm-hmm. Well, that was huge to take him. Now he he, he probably loves it. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like, he's trying like, to come back next year already. Yep. And, what, and what he's done is he has told that story to three or four people that he knows don't never been dog hunting because right. Right. since he doesn't dog hunt, deer dog hunt he probably hangs out with people that don't deer dog hunt right. you know what i'm saying and word of mouth is the greatest thing we have yep. in nowadays i don't care if you're trying to sell a car sell a dog right. or do anything word of mouth is good it can either kill you or it can make you right and what somebody says about you is everything and what people say about us is everything and i think we need to keep our p's and q's yep. everybody needs to do what they can right everybody needs to be smart Everybody needs to hunt smart. We all have some landowners that disagree with what we do or disagree with how we do it. But right. it's it, the uh, I like what that guy said the other week on your podcast. It, uh, I think it was the uh, maybe the guy that sings the dog kite song, or yeah, maybe yeah, it yeah. was the, maybe it was the guy that wrote the book. I can't remember. But they right. said everybody heard the everybody's heard the argument. Well, we've been doing this for years. Well, it's time we have more of an argument. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It's yep. time we use these deer studies. <laughs> Quite frankly, there's a there's somebody that just spoke at these meetings that a landowner down there near my hunt club mm-hmm. that spoke at the meetings. Right. And you and me have spoke about him before. Yep. And yep. his son just released a YouTube video, actually, right. of a hunt right there on their farm. Yep. And his son had a successful hunt on Thanksgiving Day with their mature. It was a nice 18, 19 inch deer that they have been. They have. They have cameras, right? And they have pictures of this deer for the last three or four years on their little small hundred, hundred and twenty acre farm, right? But yet this man is in Richmond trying to say dog hunting's ruining their farm. But yet his son just killed this buck that they've had pictures of for four years. Yep. Like our dogs didn't affect his hunting, no way, right? In no way aspect of it, right? But I mean, I think it, 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 the studies, like I mean. <laughs> In my way, his YouTube video was kind of a good study for hounds. Exactly. It even he even has the hounds in the video, but then he turns around and says, "We did, you know, we we did, they successfully killed the deer, and that's awesome. Right. I'm all for anybody's way of hunting. Yep. Uh, anybody's a legal way of hunting, and a lot of people learn. I'm, I'm sure those guys that you took hunting, they realized the other day that it's not all." Of course, they loved that they killed that nice buck. Right. But you had just as much fun, and did you kill anything that day? I loved it. I you know what I'm saying? I didn't kill a damn thing, but that— It ain't got nothing to do about the kill. <clears throat> right. Yep. I mean, killing, of course, we all—that's that. Oh, you! everybody wants a big buck, but well, the course, running yeah. dogs is— Running dogs is—it's it's, it's totally different than just about having the trophy or yep. whatever. It's all yep. about camaraderie, and it's— you know, my I was talking about it the first thing in the introduction about me and my grandfather hunting at in Cumberland County. I mean, that hunt club down there is a it is a it is a second family to me. I mean, <laughs> right? There right. are guys that in that hunt club that will probably be in my wedding one day. You know, <laughs> right, like right. you know, like and if it wasn't for a dog chasing a deer, I would not know them. Right. I wouldn't know. Yep. So, and but I, I think the sports going right direction but we need to stay on it yeah and i want to add to that you know and i want to add to what you talked about at the beginning of this topic with the you know only 72 people showing up but i wrote about it in a blog if i remember right and 
I want to challenge all Virginia, you know, everybody in every state should do it too, but especially, you know, Virginia right now with the fight that we're going to and, and from my understanding what's going on in Colorado as well, I challenge every houndsman out there to pick. What is going on in Colorado? So they are – you need to check out the Houndsman XP's podcast. They go a lot more in depth okay. with it, but it's okay. it's a um, they're trying to rewrite the wording on uh, like predator uh, running like predator um, like uh, co- uh, coyotes and mountain lions and stuff like that. Like they're really making an attack to try to get uh, dog running against you know dog running. Uh, big game, I think, is what they're, that kind of stuff eliminated in Colorado. But my challenge to everybody listening that's a houndsman, I want you to go to a meeting. Pick a meeting. There's four a year. It's quarterly meetings. Go to a meeting. I know it's going to be hard. Usually at the end of the meetings, they uh, announce when the next date is going to be. And I'll have to go back and dig back in my in my in my notes somewhere and find it. But um, go to a, go to a meeting, pick a pick a quarter, make that your goal, and go to a meeting in person. It's not hard, yeah. you know. I know, I understand some people can't carry your phones into work and that kind of stuff. But even if you just tune in and listen, it's such good uh, information. It's such good knowledge to know. And see what we're up against. But go to a meeting, show your support, and that I'm telling you that would be a huge difference for us. Absolutely, man. Yeah, I agree. And I and I think this is something like I said, me and my grandfather were going three or four years ago. We went when it got real bad. Right. And we were going to the meeting, and we were we're in that big picture where Pawpaw is. And I need to get better about it. Like I was saying, if I got time, I got time to judge all these hunts. I mean, I got time. I I, I know I got time. I can take a day off to go to one. I, I took a day off last year, the year before, to go up there, and I need to do it more. Right, right. I'm definitely yeah. going to try to do my standpoint because it kind of goes back. Uh, we're, this community is just kind of like a fox hound. A fox hound is a monkey see, monkey do. I think a fox hunter is too. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Say I you agree. and me, we start trying to do more. Well, maybe people that we see will start doing more. You know, maybe yep. if you can get your kennel partners to do a little more and I can get mine to do a little more and then people That's in their it. hunt club will do a little more, you know. And, I mean, it's a snowball effect. We can all work with each other and we all need to work together. Yep. That's it. That's it 100%, man. 100%. Well, John, we're at almost two and a half hours. So <laughs> it has been Ooh. fantastic, man. This has been really, really good. Um. Man, I cannot thank you enough for coming on and, and appreciate all your support, man. I really do. Yeah, I just uh, want to thank you, James, for the opportunity to be on here. And a uh, shout-out to anybody that's ever helped me uh, start out judging or helped me with dogs in any way, really. Give a shout-out to all my kennel partners, uh, Kent Store Mafia, them guys. Back to how I made a champion. It would have never been possible without them. They weren't even there, but they were here feeding dogs at the house, you know. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, this is a good thing you got going too. I really like this podcast and I think you'll get, hopefully you get some even, you get more guests and everybody will want to get on here and get some more followers and really get this thing out there past the hound community, you know, have people listening that haven't ever even been around it before, you know, I mean, yeah, the man. podcast community is big. Ever since I've just started listening to your podcast, I've kind of ventured off to this podcast and that podcast and kind of listened to you know, I started off listening to a podcast about hounds and was listening to one the other day about something totally different. You know? Right, right. Yep. I mean, yep. it's definitely a good thing going, and I think it'll work out. And I thank appreciate you. it, buddy. I really do. It means a lot, man. So, all right, everybody. I appreciate everybody listening. This has been real fun. Y'all let me know what you think. I'm, I'm sure we touched on some, some touchy subjects, but I, I think it was all necessary, and I think it was all in the right direction and, and all good stuff. So, uh, like I said, John, I appreciate you again, and congratulations on making that champion again this year, buddy, and uh, hope, for, hope for some more future success for you next year. No doubt, buddy, and I hope the same for you. Hopefully, maybe next year I'll be there and be able to take a picture with you first place. You know, <laughs> Absolutely. I hope so, too. So, <laughs> so. Well, yeah. Like I said, everybody's there to win, but <laughs> that's right. That picture, that picture right there, I mean, you're in that picture. That's a picture I'll yep. show my kids and 
my grandkids, you know what I'm saying? And yep. maybe one day we'll show them be like, hey, you know that famous podcast? That's the guy, right? <laughs> one can hope. <laughs> yeah. Well, buddy, yeah. I appreciate it again. And everybody out there listening, thank y'all so much. Y'all have been awesome. Uh, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button on there. And uh, y'all keep on listening, guys. Uh, and like always, everybody, happy hunting. <laughs>